Hello, this is Father Randy Sly with another installment of Day by Day, where each day we take a look at a reading from Holy Scripture found in the Daily Mass. Today is this Monday of the second week of Lent. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Be merciful, just as also your Father is merciful. Stop stop judging, and you will not be judged. Stop condemning, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and gifts will be given to you. A good measure, packed together, shaken down and overflowing, will be poured into your lap. For the measure with which you measure will be in turn be measured out to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, three short verses, but jam-packed with things that are really good for us to think about in our Lenten journey. And again, uh, we have in our lectionary, the church has taken us through a pilgrimage of scriptures that will help us to evaluate and examine certain areas of our life. And here Jesus is making sure that we understand that we cannot just uh, inherently uh, expect God to act toward us in one way if we uh, continue to act in the opposite way toward the people around us. This goes back even as far as to the Our Father where he said, you know, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And here he says, be merciful just as your Father is merciful. Mercy is an interesting word. In the Latin, the word is misericordia, which comes from two words, uh, to suffer, which is misery uh, or miseria, and uh, cordia, which is heart. And it basically is to suffer uh, uh, for the hearts of others that are in pain. And so uh, we see mercy as being an identification with the suffering, the needs of other people, and the desire to alleviate that suffering. And so we uh, are kind of compelled to act in that way toward others, just as God has been compelled to act in that way toward us. And again, uh, as he, he shows us here, that if we act toward others in an opposite way, it will uh, basically uh, frustrate or cut us off from that same activity from the Lord, that if we judge others, then we place ourselves in a a position where we too will find ourselves judged. If we condemn others, we're going to find ourselves in the process of of being condemned. In other words, how we respond and, and look at others needs to be according to God's perspective, not according to our human nature. But when we are able to really uh, allow God's love, his uh, mercy, his his forgiving heart to be in us, it really opens for us uh, to receive more fully what God has intended for us in the same way. One of the things that we see here is stop judging and stop condemning. Stop judging. One one of the things we have to remember is we can observe how other people are and may, in fact, uh, not appreciate the way that they act. Uh, And that's just looking at an action and not appreciating that action. Uh, It could be uh, somebody cutting you off on the road, or it could be uh, somebody being mean to you. Uh, in a store or whatever. And uh, those things are actions. We can observe those objectively and say, that's not right. Judging is different than that. Judging is taking that act and then inferring uh, an ultimate end for someone that does that. In other words, um, if someone does something evil to you, to uh, to judge is to say then that purple uh, that person rather is uh, 
going to end up uh, in eternal punishment. That's judging. In other words, it's taking an action and making a, a judgment about the person it's himself or herself and relegating that person only uh, to that as being their quality of life. We don't know. Sometimes people can act mean because they're having a bad day. And that doesn't mean that they're bad people. And yet, if we relegate them to being a bad person, that's judgment. The same with condemning. If we have someone that does something and we condemn them, we're basically then purposing that they do end up in eternal punishment. And that places within us a restriction on being able to receive God's mercy, God's grace, God's love, all of those things are shut off from us. That's why confession is so good and so important if we do things like judging or condemning. And we have to be sure that, to remember these are very serious things. To judge someone is to basically make an evaluation on their total being on the basis of what we observe. That's very scary. We don't know what's going on inside any other individual. And so uh, this is where Jesus is being very, very clear and cautioning that we do not do these things. But if we are merciful, if we forgive, if we live that way toward others, then God opens, well, we open ourselves to the love, mercy, grace, and everything that God has for us and is wanting to pour out. And that's one of the things we have to remember is that, that we're the ones that can stop that grace from flowing. It is not that he is unwilling, is that we make it uh, untenable for us to actually receive it. So that's, again, it's where it's wonderful for us to look at this scripture, to look at our, there are areas where we're being uh, unmerciful. Are we judging? Are we condemning people? Have we uh, lived with unforgiveness? If so, these are areas we can take to the Lord through confession and find absolution, help, and grace. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. <clears throat> Sometimes a, a good remedy for uh, judging, to stop judging or to stop condemning, is when you find yourself in that mode, when somebody is doing something, and uh, uh, to judge them, again, as I said, is to determine finally their ultimate destiny or their ultimate character, who they really are based on the, the actions that we observe. Instead, how good it would be for us, rather than to judge, but to pray for them. Lord, help them to uh, find the grace that they need to live a happy life, to live a blessed life. The same with condemning. The, these types of, of behaviors, we can just pray that God would interrupt that particular pattern of behavior and allow his grace and his love to flow in those areas that that person, too, might find the abundant life. So may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>